Mark Blitzoff. Blitz, thanks for joining us for a chat. I know the demands on your time during a milestone week are, are pretty high, so I appreciate you coming on, particularly once the milestone's, the milestone's done. 250 is an amazing achievement. Um, so firstly, congratulations. I know there was a fair bit of um, maybe some good fortune involved in, in getting the initial opportunity, but um, it's, it's a pretty amazing achievement there, thereafter. So first and foremost, congratulations. Thank you very much, Meg. Yeah, it's, um, as you mentioned, probably a bit fortunate early. I was just got my first game probably because I was the only healthy ruckman on the list. So yeah, right. um, yeah but um, here we are, I'll take that start. <laughs> I'm always interested when people have played as much as you about, are you the kind of player that can remember every single one? Like if I said, you know, what happened in, when you played the Bulldogs in 2016, do you, do you have that there ready to go? Um, I don't. <clears throat> some games stick with me more than others. Yep. Um, some milestone games, um, especially Joel 300 and, yeah, yeah. and obviously the Gaz 351. And, um, but no, I don't have that photographic memory of every play like a LeBron James would in the, yeah. in the NBA that he does. And so the, the count started, I guess, round one 2013. That was your first AFL game. If we can go back there, how many games did you play before that? Because I imagine you've probably played more at the top level than you had at any other level. Is that true? Or you played enough juniors to, to get up there? <coughs> um, I played a season of under-11s for Sunbury Lions mm -hmm. um, with Ben Guthrie, Cam's older brother. Andrew, Cam's dad, coached me. Uh, and that was sort of the start I got for Andrew to speak to Wellesley for me to be recruited. Um, and I played a season of under-12s with Taylor's Lakes Lions as well. Um, with a couple of my athletics mates, just wanted to go there, just wanted to play with my friends. So, um, yeah, that was it. That was my sort of junior football career. And then growing up was more athletics and basketball were my two main sports I enjoyed. Um, so, yeah, when it got time to debut round one, I was uh, pretty fresh in the football yeah. world, if I'm honest. Yeah. yeah, I look at your journey to sort of getting on the list and I, I look at it and I think, look, it's, it's so much more similar to a lot of what AFRW girls experience. So have a kick when you're young, go and play an elite sport elsewhere and then find your way back to AFL. Um, and I often find that really changes their experience and their sort of appetite for it when you then get that opportunity. So how did you feel that sort of point of difference impacted how you took the opportunity when it was presented to you? Yeah, I would agree. Um, if I, I think if I tried to become an AFL footballer, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been picked up. As an 18 year old in my draft year, <clears throat> I went through puberty middle, 17 and a half years old. So like, um, I was this spindly six foot five, gangly, wouldn't have got even a look in. So the path I chose from athletics, that side of, way, side of things to then become a Geelong player at 21, out. And then mm. from there, because I hadn't had much experience in the football world, I just wanted to learn as much as I, as I could. Um, and because I didn't know and I was surrounded by players that knew exactly what they were doing, I was like, oh, I need to catch up really quick here because I've been gifted this opportunity. Um, let's make the most of it. Yeah, I want to return to your learning uh, later on, but I remember the Hall of Fame, you know, when you were given your life, life membership, and I think Harry Taylor spoke about your, you lapped everyone in your first 2K <laughs> and then you thought you were going to go again. Is that, is that true? <laughs> um, no, it's oh, a bit of okay. mayo from Harry, but um, yeah, I, he, I, w I would have loved to have gone again, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed yeah, athletics yeah, yeah. and that was day one of my first pre-season was a 2K time trial. So I'm like, yeah. oh, how good is this? It's just yeah, all, all running, um, which I really enjoyed. And then the next day we actually do some footy and tackling and some yeah. physical stuff. I'm like, oh, this is actually a bit harder than I thought. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I did, I did love my athletics background and um, I think the middle distance stuff that I have done has really helped me stay healthy on the park for footy training and games yeah. um, because of um, the previous work I'd done as a, as a junior athlete. So um, yeah, I love my time in athletics and then going to football and team sport, I've, yeah. I've absolutely loved it. Yeah. While we're on the early years, I want to talk about the Category B rookie program and the impacts that it's had. I guess it's like it's changed your life and it's also changed probably the fortunes of our, of our footy club and our, and our AFL list in particular. Yeah, I'm uh, a massive advocate for the Category B. Um, hadn't heard of it until I got drafted as a Category B rookie. Um, and Scotty made in the presser previously that made comment that they probably wouldn't have taken a chance on me if it didn't exist. So, um, yeah, I'm a big advocate for that. I think there's a lot of athletes in different sports 
that can succeed in the AFL world if given an opportunity, um, right across the board of all sports. So the category B allows um, players to be found and, and thrive in that. And also then, I suppose, when you come to footy, as you and I did in our early 20s, you, you're sort of living out that dream of, that you had as a kid, possibly in a different sport, but being able to live an elite athlete life and um, you know, a life that's completely different to one that you might have been looking at at, at 20, had you, had you not made it in Yes, life. yes, yes. Yeah, exactly right. Um, we're really fortunate that we are given this opportunity and um, yeah, you're probably stupid if you don't try and make the most of it and however you go about that. But um, yeah, it's, it's one that I've tried to take on with both hands and, and learn as quick as I can. And um, yeah, that opportunity has been amazing. You mentioned the team sport aspect. Mm. Um, I've made some great mates over the time and I absolutely love coming to training. And there's times when it's raining or it's cold, middle of winter, it can get unmotivating. Um, they're the, they're the things and the people that motivate me, my mates, um, the coaches, the people around this great club. Uh, it's, it's a very motivating thing and, and that's the team sport aspect, I think. Yeah, I think you speak about the club as a whole and we do have to sort of thank our foundation program that supports the Category B you know, rookies and I think it's really given us a competitive advantage when you look at yourself and, and the Irish players that have come in. It's that point of difference for the Cats. Yeah, oh, exactly right. Um, I think a lot of clubs try and do it and... Um, yeah, you'd be silly not to, but uh, it wouldn't happen without um, the people being involved and, and donating and making the Category B work. And so um, we're seeing, obviously, Mark O'Connor's come across. Um, Oshie and Mullins going really well. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think we will not stop looking for Category Bs, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, you spoke about um, your willingness to learn before, and I think it's been noted you know, as people have spoken glowingly about you over the past week, just how good a learner you are. So I'm interested in how did you learn to learn? Where is that? Yep. Have you always sort of had that in you? Is it the, is it the program itself? Is it your experience in other sports? Um, yeah, who, who, who taught you the importance of that continued growth? Um, yeah, it's a good question. My parents probably had a big, big thing to do with it, um, both coming from professional mm. um, sporting life with basketball, <clears throat> Um, yeah, was, and they probably instilled in me that it's okay to ask questions even if they're um, questions that are probably pretty simple answers to. Yeah. Um, and if you can't get it, ask again, it's okay, people will help you. And that was a great thing for me when I probably annoyed a few teammates, Harry Taylor, Max Rook, Andrew Mackey, off the top of my head, they're the, yeah. my go-to guys early. I was asking questions, um, but they were more than happy to answer and help yeah. where they could. Yeah. Um, and then for me, I just I wanted to listen to the answers and try and take that in. And um, they'd probably explain it. I didn't understand. I'd ask again. They'd explain it. I didn't understand. I'd ask it again. So yeah. um, credit to them. They didn't get too frustrated. But um, yeah, my, my parents were probably the ones that um, just were instilling in me to make the most of opportunities. Um, and I've always been sort of a keen learner to figure out how or why things are what they are. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty quick to, if I don't know or understand something, I'll ask even, even to this day. So then I look on the flip side now, it's 250 games later. Um, if we've got a younger player asking me questions on, mm -hmm. from what the, how I've been treated from the past players, I'm, I'm going to help them try and thrive as best they can. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, and I think it's about knowing that you're worthy of an answer. You know, it doesn't matter where you are on the list, how, how you've come to be on the list make the most of your time, as you're saying, and, and ask the questions and get better. And it seems you've continued to do that through your entire career, and I feel like this is probably the club for it, of course, to, you know, to continue to get better, you know, and you know, celebrate your longevity. Um, what do you sort of attribute that, that to, that getting better with age, that sort of lots of our players are getting better in, into their 30s? Um, <clears throat> I think the coaches are a big part of that. Um, they allow us to play with freedom and they put us in a position on field where we're going to be able to play to our strengths. Yeah. Um, and they continually ask us to improve. And even though I've just turned 33 or Hawks 36 and Stu's 30, whatever it is, mm. um, try and have your best year as a player in the club. Yeah. So you might not have your best year as a player, but if you're learning and working towards that, 
it's going to help. So, um, yeah, the coaches without the freedom they give us to, to play and express ourselves. And, and then we've just got a good group that we try and compete every year. And that's a motivating thing. If you can win games and you can um, put yourself in position to win it every year, yeah. you want to get better and improve. So, um, yeah, it's, I think it's not just the coaches, it's the whole... Um, ethos almost. Ethos and everything yeah. we've created here with um, the, the men and women's programs, um, the upstairs, the membership we're trying to get, the community, we're trying to continue to build and, and get better. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun place to, to be around and try and improve. Yeah, because I imagine it's all very well being an athletic weapon when you're coming off attempting to qualify for the Olympics. Being that same weapon at, at 33, is, is challenging after 250 games of get, getting beaten up. So you sort of your attention to detail has to has to maintain, I assume. Yeah, oh, it does. Yep, um, your recovery needs to yeah. be on point. Um, plenty more ice baths, probably. Um, that was probably a challenge early in my career was the physical side of things and yeah. getting tackled in corkies and rebounding from that. Um, and now, um, 12, 13 years on, I understand my body from a footballer's point of view pretty well. So I know what I need and what I um, where not where I can get my recovery from um, yeah. but yeah, as you know it's something you probably just keep learning every year and um, I was probably feeling a bit fresher and faster and zippier at 21 but yeah. the experience as you get older yeah. plays a massive part. You spoke about um, you know the coaching staff putting you where you're going to maximise your talents and having that flexibility and continuing to grow. I want to ask you about your role in the team obviously you know we celebrate that you're our trump card and you can go anywhere and play any position but as a player, I look at that and I think that's got to come with its challenges, either from having a sense of belonging within a line or being able to hone a really specific craft. Has that, has that ever been a challenge, the fact that you're trying to master a number of different things? Yeah, it has, yes. Um, early on with that, probably, um, as you mentioned, when I was sort of a bit of, bit of down back, bit of mid, um, yeah, and maybe that sense of belonging between the two groups and lines yeah. or whatever it might be, but... Um, as I've continued to play that way, I've really grown fond of the challenge and I've grown fond of priding myself on if, if we need to fill a position during the game through injury or um, whatever it might be, that they can rely on me. So I take pride in that. Um, yeah, and I, I just enjoy the challenge. And I think after 12 or 13 years, I'm pretty experienced with the majority of positions on ground. I know what's required. Yeah. And then I look around at our team at the moment, I think there's, it's a good strength of ours that um, we've got a few players that mm. can do that. I'm um, not just the only one. We see Ollie Dempsey playing a bit of wing and forward and Grimes coming up around the ball and getting forward or yeah. Um, yeah, Mark O'Connor can play back and wing. It's, really, it's a good strength to be able to do that. And then for those players to be able to play to their strengths like that, it's, um, yeah, it's exciting. I'm sure it has ultimately allowed you to connect and that's been noted as well as we've continued to celebrate you, your, your ability to connect. Shout out to Mark Worthington who said you're the best player he'd ever seen at connecting with young and inexperienced, old and experienced, all those different types of people on a list and, and then within a footy department. Um, I know you've had sort of designated leadership roles in the past but then I also hear fantastic stories about non-selected have to do a running session and you're DJing or yeah. you know um, you're having you know, teammates who need a place to live come and, and come and live with you. Is that, is that where it's at for you? Those, is that where you see your major contribution in that sort of less tangible stuff, but the stuff that makes culture, the culture that we all speak about? Um, yeah, I can, see, I can see it as a strength and I enjoy doing that. It's not forced for me. Yeah. Um, so it's just I who just, you are. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, yeah, I suppose I just enjoy interacting with people and, and having a chat and um, yeah, over my time we've had some great guys come through the club, and great teammates, so I enjoy spending time with them and getting to know them. So, um, yeah, it's something that I think, I, looking back and looking at what I do, it probably is a strength, but I enjoy doing it and it comes easy to me. So, um, yeah, if I can do that as a leader, then, um, yeah, if I, can, if I can make a player feel more comfortable around the club that as a leader, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, as you say, I think it... You know, sometimes those expectations are put on leaders, but it has to come naturally, otherwise it's too exhausting. And you bring your own strength and other people will bring others. So 
as you say, it's, it's difficult to say, yeah, yeah, that's just who I am, a great bloke, but I'll say it for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, but you're right. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. So I, I look at myself as a leader and um, on field, I'm pretty vocal, but in meetings, I tend to not mm -hmm. talk up as much as, um, I, I think Mitch Duncan is one of our smartest footballers, the way he sees the game. So yeah. um, the things he, he speaks up in meetings are really valuable. Um, and so I, it's his strength of his. He sees the game really well. Yeah. For me personally, it's not so much that, it's more the other stuff I do. So, um, yeah, as you mentioned, and it's around the, around the board, everything in terms of leadership qualities, everyone compliments everyone because they're all different strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. As we, we get towards the end, hopefully not of your career, yeah. you've got, I'm unlikely to have another 250 to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think when you've been around for as, for as long as you have, you start to realise that I'm sure the environment has a massive impact on who you are, but equally your influence over the environment continues to grow and I think or I wonder how important it is to you to sort of continue to sort of perpetuate the environment that's that's made you who you are um, yeah oh, I think it's really important while I'm here at this footy club I will continue to probably be myself and I'll continue to have fun where I where I can um, I think the moment you probably stop enjoying your role is when you it's time to sort of yeah. finish up but I'm absolutely loving coming here each day and um, yeah it's it's every day is probably pretty different every year definitely is different with yeah. see some player turnover staff turnover but um, yeah it's a good fun place to be around and I'll, I'll continue to enjoy it while I'm here and then you'll have a little more wine than usual tell me about your, your grapes that's some sort of want to want to hear about you outside of outside of the game just briefly yeah yeah I, uh, I love my wine it started <laughs> started <laughs> nine or ten years ago just because I like drinking it and then uh, I'm pretty into it. It's probably a passion of mine. Um, uh, ideally post-career, I'd love to own a vineyard and yeah. become a winemaker. Um, that might take winning the Powerball to own a vineyard. Yeah. But if I could be involved in um, the wine industry somehow, for me, potentially winemaking would be an incredible thing. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm sort of... Uh, looking after a one acre block of Pinot Noir grapes at the moment. Yeah. Um, Reese's neighbour um, has just, we're not working on him anymore. So he said, feel free if you want to do whatever. So I'm so lucky that I've been um, able to just go and have this work experience sort of um, plot of um, grapes that I'm trying to get back to life. And um, that's led me to have some Zoom meetings and coffees with other winemakers in the business. And I'm really enjoying um, yeah, sort of just that side of things. So it's not just the drinking side of things, but um, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. I like the uh, history of it and um, we get our off-season break, October, November. I try to um, get to some sort of wine region somewhere, either uh, interstate or yeah. international, interna international um, to improve my skills as a taster and winemaker. <laughs> <laughs> I think that speaks to, you know, that when you are in a community like this, the connections grow. So it's while maintaining yourself to be able to perform out there, you, of, you also get all these other benefits about being part of this community. So yeah. and, it's, it's, and it's great, like, um, you speak about whether now our player development managers we have at the club, um, they really encourage us to um, continue to improve off-field as well with, with study or work placement building towards the end of the career because inevitably everyone has to retire at some stage. So um, for me, that's been a great outlet and a great balance to help my football. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that I would sort of recommend that too, that having something outside of football um, gives you an outlet to then, so when you are in the club, mm -hmm. you're giving it 100% and you, you feel fresh and ready to contribute. Yeah. All right, last one, bit of pressure, 250 games, so I've gone 25 words or less. Yep. What it, what's the secret to what you've achieved in your career so far? 25 words or less. All right. That's fine. Gone already. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> There's um, I really have fun with it. Um, keen to learn, so I ask a lot of questions. And I listen to the answers. And I love working hard and I want to get the best out of myself. That's awesome. And I, Awesome. That's the 25 words when we're done now. And that's, uh, yeah, and then my teammates are the massive contributors to that. Like, I, I want to play for my teammates and I love playing with them. 
Yeah. Yep. Well, that's evident to not only your teammates, but everyone at the club. So on behalf of an, another player and a member of the community, thank you for helping create the environment that we all enjoy. Congratulations and plenty more to come, I'm sure. Amazing, Meg. Thank you very much. No awesome. worries.